Hello everyone, welcome back to Law and Obligations and Contracts. For this video, our topic is Joint and Solidary Obligations, which is covered by Articles 1207 to 1222. Let us begin. Kinds of obligations according to the number of parties. We have individual obligation, one where there is only one debtor or one creditor. We have collective obligation, one where there are two or more debtors and or two or more creditors. It may be joint or solidary. Definitions. Joint obligation is one where the whole obligation is to be paid or fulfilled proportionately by the different debtors and or is to be demanded proportionately by the different creditors. Take note here of the word proportionately. Later, we will learn what joint obligation is. Solidary obligation is one where each one of the debtors is bound to render and or each one of the creditors has a right to demand from any of the debtors entire compliance of the prestation. So take note here the word entire compliance of the prestation. So, let me give you an example of a joint obligation. So, for example, A, B, and C borrowed 9,000 from D. In a joint obligation, A, B, and C have share in the 9,000 pesos liability. So, since the law says that here, the obligation shall be uh, in proportion to the share of each debtor. So, meaning to say, since the money is nine, the, the money borrowed by A, B, and C is 9,000 pesos, then A has a debt of 3,000, B has a debt of 3,000, and C has a debt of 3,000 to D. So, for a total of 9,000 pesos. So, therefore, D can collect from A 3,000 pesos only, D can collect from B 3,000 pesos only, and C can collect from, uh, and D can collect from C 3,000 pesos only. Because here, the obligation is a joint obligation, meaning uh, they have a separate obligation. Although, they have contracted the obligation at the same time. Now, let's go to solidary obligation. So, Solidary debtors A, B, and C borrowed 9,000 from D. So, how the solidary obligation applies? Here, A, B, and C, they are solidarily liable for 9,000 pesos. Meaning to say, A is entirely liable for the 9,000 pesos. B is entirely liable for 9,000 pesos and C is entirely liable for 9,000 pesos. Meaning, hindi siya hinati-hati kasi the, the obligation is solidary. Sometimes, I call this one for all, all for one. Kung ano yung utang ni A, yun din yung utang ni B. At yun din ang utang ni C. So, meaning to say, B can demand collection from either of the Solidary debtor. So, D can go to A and collect the entire 9,000 or pwede si D pumunta siya kay B to collect the 9,000 or si D pupunta siya kay C to collect the 9,000 pesos. So, that is solidary obligation. So, if you can compare it to joint obligation, kung mapapansin ninyo, the liability of A, B, and C are separate from each other. D cannot go to A and collect 9,000 pesos kasi the liability is separate. So, ang pwede lang i-collect ni D kay A is 3,000 pesos because the obligation is joint. Presumption in a collective obligation. Article 1207, the concurrence of two or more creditors or of two or more debtors in one in the same obligation does not imply that each one of the former has a right to demand 
or that each one of the latter is bound to render. Entire compliance with the provision. There is solidary liability only when the obligation expressly states or when the law or the nature of the obligation requires solidarity. So if there is a collective obligation, the law presumes that the obligation is joint. Now, if there is no uh, express stipulation that the obligation is solidary, then there is a presumption that in a collective obligation, the obligation is merely joint. So, for example, the problem says that A, B, and C borrowed 9,000 from D. Since from the, that uh, scenario, there is no express stipulation that the obligation is solidary. Um, the law neither requires, or the nature of the obligation neither requires uh, solidary liability. So therefore, here, there is a presumption that the obligation is merely joint. So in this scenario, we have multiple debtors and only one creditor. So, so meaning to say, yeah, joint yung liability. So kanya-kanya si A, B, and C ng utang kay D, although the obligation was contracted at the same time. So ano yung effect again ng, ng joint obligation? D can collect only up to 3,000 from A, 3,000 from B, and 3,000 from C kasi the obligation is joint. Hati-hati siya, proportionate. The same is true if there are multiple creditors and one debtor. So for example, D borrowed from A, B, and C 9,000. Since there is no express stipulation that the obligation is solidary, nor the law requires that uh, the obligation is solidary, nor the nature of the obligation requires solidarity, then this kind of obligation or collective obligation is merely joint. So same principle. Okay? Meaning, since these are creditors, um, A cannot collect from D the, the entire 9,000 pesos. Kasi yung right niya lang sa 9,000 is only up to 3,000 pesos. So A can only collect 3,000 from D. The same is true with B. B has the right only to 3,000 pesos. So therefore, B can collect only 3,000 from D. The same is true with C. Kasi nga, the obligation is joint. What if, for example, there are multiple debtors and creditors? A and B borrowed 9,000 from C and D. So the presumption here still applies. There are two debts and two credits. Each creditor can demand only 4,500 from either debtor. So each debtor then has the liability of 4,500 each. So if the, the obligation is again joined, C creditor, C, 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 C cannot um, collect more than 4,500 from D because her right only is up to 4,500. And D also cannot collect from A and B more than 4,500 kasi nga, the obligation is joint. On the other hand, the debtors cannot, uh, are not required to pay more than 4,500 each kasi yung liability nila is up to 45 only. Kasi nga, the obligation is joint, meaning there is a proportionate share for each of the debtor and for each of the creditor. So, we learned earlier that uh, if the obligation does not contain any express stipulation that it is solidary, nor the nature or the law requires solidarity, the presumption is that the collective obligation is a joint obligation. So, kailan pala ngayon magiging solidary ang obligation? Under Article 1207, there is solidarity only when, one, the obligation expressly so states, sabi natin kanina, Second, the law requires solidarity. Third, the nature of the obligation requires solidarity. Fourth, when imposed in a final judgment against several defendants. So what are the words used not to indicate solidarity? 
Number one, we have joint and, and or severally. So these words are uh, indicate solidarity. If uh, these words are present in the problem, then the obligation is solidarity. Solidaria, in solidum, together and or separately, individually and or collectively, junto separa, separadamente, and I promise to pay, although I lang yung nakalagay, but if it is signed by two or more persons, then the obligation is solidarity. Now let's go to the kinds of solidarity obligation. According to the parties bond, it may be a passive solidarity. So, kailan siya nagiging passive solidarity? If the solidarity on the, is on the part of the debtors, where one of them can be made liable for the fulfillment of the entire obligation. It is in the nature of mutual guarantee. For example, A, B, and C solidarity debtors borrowed 9,000 from B. So, here, since the solidarity uh, is on the part of the debtors kasi tatlo sila na debtors, isa lang yung creditor, then ang tawag sa solidarity na yan is passive solidarity. Again, either of the solidarity debtor is liable to pay the entire obligation. So, pwedeng si D maningil siya kay A for the entire 9,000 or si D punta siya kay B para mag-collect ng entire 9,000 or kay C. So, we also have active solidarity. Active solidarity exists if solidarity is on the part of the creditor, where any one of them can demand the fulfillment of the entire obligation. So, for example, B borrowed 9,000 from solidarity creditors A, B, and C. Let us say, for example, A, B, and C here are creditors, solidarity creditors. So, if that is the case, if there are several creditors and only one debtor, the solidarity is active. So, meaning to say, uh, any one of the solidarity creditor can demand the fulfillment of the entire obligation. So, pwedeng si A, uh, mag-collect siya kay B for the entire 9,000 pesos. Or pwedeng si B yung mag-collect for the entire 9,000 from B. Kasi nga, either of them can demand the fulfillment of the entire obligation. Mixed solidarity, the solidarity on the part of the debtors and creditors, where each one of the debtors is liable to render, and each one of the creditors has a right to demand entire compliance with the obligation. So in this case, as you can see, there are two debtors and two creditors in the given example. So we have solidarity debtors A and B borrowed 9,000 from solidarity creditors C and D. So what will happen? A or B can pay either C or D the entire amount of 9,000. Kasi nga, one for all, one for one. Ang utang ni A, utang din ni B. On the other hand, C or D can demand from either A or B the payment of the entire amount of 9,000. Again, one for all, all for one. Ang claim ni C, claim din ni B. So it's either, pwede si C yung mag-collect for the entire amount of 9,000 from B. Pwede din si B ang mag-collect for the entire amount of 9,000. Kinds of solidarity according to source. We have conventional solidarity where solidarity agreed upon by the parties. Legal solidarity where solidarity is imposed by the law. Example, the responsibility of two or more persons who are liable for quasi-delic is solidarity. Lastly, real solidarity, where solidarity is imposed by the nature of the obligation. For example, the nature of the obligation of employers under the former workmen's compensation law to pay indemnity or compensation for death or injury caused to their employees while in the performance of their assigned duty was held solidary, although the law is silent on this point. Because the law was enacted to give full protection to employees, and if the responsibility were only joint, the purpose of the law might not be attained should one of the employees happen to be insolvent. 
So according to legal tie, uh, it may be uniform or non-uniform or varied. When you say uniform, when the parties are bound by the same stipulations or manner. When you say non-uniform or varied, when the parties are not subject to the same stipulations or manner. But take note here that the rule in solidarity is not affected by diverse stipulations in the obligation. So, for example, A, B, and C solidary debtors borrowed 9,000 from D. So, if we base on the kind of solidarity as to the, the person liable or as to the ano yun, parties bound pala, parties bound. So, this is a passive solidarity because there are two or more solidary debtors and only one creditor. So, for example, kasama sa agreement nila na si A, yung payment niya is by installment at the rate of 1,000 per month starting July. Si B, yung utang niya is babayaran niya sa September na. Si C, babayaran niya sa December. So, meaning to say, the obligation is not uniform. So, it is non-uniform or varied because uh, the parties are bound, are not subject to the same stipulation or manner of performing their respective obligation. So what will happen? In July, A can demand, uh, sorry, D, D, D pala, D can demand only 1,000 from A. D can also make a demand from B and C for the 1,000 share corresponding to A, kasi nga solidary. But, D cannot recover yet the shares of B and C. Kasi nga, kay B is sa September pa mag kay C is sa December pa mag -Jew. In September, kung September na, D can collect now from A the installment of uh, 1,000 pesos. And since the obligation of A, B, and C is solidary, then D can collect the, the obligation of A from B or C. At the same time, since it is September already, then D can demand now the payment from B. Kasi September na. But only to the share of B, which is 3,000 pesos. But the share of C in the obligation cannot be collected by D because it is not yet due and demandable. Why? December pa man. In December, oh, since the entire obligation of A, B, and C were already due and demandable, then D can now collect from either from A, B, or C, you know, the, the respective shares of A, B, or C in the obligation. So this means that uh, even if the manner of paying the obligation is not uniform or is varied, still there is uh, the application of solidarity uh, remain, no? remain in effect. So even if yung utang lang ni A yung nag -due, D can still collect the amount due from B or C. Or even if yung utang lang ni A and B yung nag still D can collect from C with respect to the due na utang ni A and B. So that's how solidarity works. Take note that solidarity is not presumed. Why? Because solidarity obligations are burdensome. For they create unusual rights and liabilities. Solidarity between debtors increases their responsibility while solidarity between creditors increases the right of each creditor. The law tends to favor the debtors in presuming that they are bound jointly and not solidarily. 
So let's talk about acts of a solidary creditor. So what will happen? Article 12, 12. Each one of the solidary creditors may do whatever may be useful to the others, but not anything which may be prejudicial to the latter. Diba we said earlier that in a solidary obligation, the debt of one is the debt of all, or the credit of one is the credit of all. So here, if the creditor has done a useful act uh, or an act which is uh, beneficial to the other solidary creditor, then the other solidary creditor will be benefit thereby. But if the solidary creditor will do anything which is prejudicial to the other solidary creditors, then what is the effect? Then the solidary creditor who performs a prejudicial act shall be liable for damages. Second article, Article 1213, a solidary creditor cannot assign his rights without the consent of the others. Kasi nga, di ba, we said that the credit of one is the credit of all. So therefore, you cannot just assign your right without asking the other solidary creditors about it. So in the absence of consent given by the others, a solidary creditor cannot assign his rights to a third person. The reason behind this prohibition is that each creditor represents the others, and the assignee may not have the confidence of the original solidary creditors, considering that the assignee, after receiving payment, may not give the shares of the others. But if the assignment is made to a co solidary creditor, meaning to say, uh, ibenta mo yung rights mo sa kasama mo na solidary creditor, the law says that. Uh, consent is no longer necessary. Consent is required only if you will assign your right to a third person who is not a co solidary creditor. Article 1215 Novation, compensation, confusion, or remission of the debt made by any of the solidary creditors or with any of the solidary debtors shall extinguish the obligation without prejudice to the provisions of Article 1219. So what, is, uh, what are these novation, compensation, confusion, or remission of the debt? Under the Civil Code, these are modes or causes of extinguishing an obligation. When you say extinguishing an obligation, uh, the obligation will... Uh, no longer exist. So, mawala na yung obligation. So, what will happen if a solidary creditor will um, will novate, compensate, or confuse, or remit the debt? Under the law, the solidary creditor who executed any of these acts should be liable to the others for their corresponding shares, considering that such acts are prejudicial to them. So this is what I'm saying, no, kanina na. While a solidary creditor may do useful acts for the benefit of other solidary creditors, if the solidary creditor will perform prejudicial acts, then that solidary creditor will be liable for damages. So examples of prejudicial acts are Novation, compensation, confusion, or remission of the debt. So, what about um, in joint oblig obligation? What is the effect if there is novation, compensation, confusion, or remission of the debt in a joint obligation? Under the law, in a joint obligation, novation, comp compensation, confusion, remission, prescription, and any other causes of 
extinguishing an obligation does not extinguish or modify the obligation except with respect to the creditor or debtor affected without extending its operation to any other part of the debt or of the credit. Why? Because in a joint obligation, the, the obligation of each creditor is separate from the obligation of the other solidary, uh, sorry, the other joint debtor. So meaning to say, kanya-kanya yung kanilang liability. So kung for example, yung isang joint debtor, um, he will uh, condone the, his share, then it will not affect the share of the other joint debtors. Or let, it, let, let me say that uh, if the creditor will condone the debt of A, then the debt of B and C will still remain. So that is in case of joint obligation. But with solidary obligation, if the creditor, one of the solidary creditor, creditors rather, will, no, will, will perform novation, compensation, confusion, remission of the debt, then um, he or she will be liable for damages because in solidary obligation, the entire obligation will be extinguished. Twelve sixteen, the creditor may proceed against any one of the solidary debtors or some or all of them simultaneously. The demand made against one of them shall not be an obstacle to those which may be subsequently directed against the others, so long as the debt has not been fully collected. So we have already illustrated this a while ago, that um, the creditor can proceed against any of the solidary debtors. So kanina, in the example, B can go to A you know, for, for the payment of the entire obligation, or he can go to B. So, Mamili lang siya, no? Mamili lang siya kung sino yung uh, pupuntahan niya at kanino siya magko-collect nyo ng amount. That is in solidary obligation. Article 1219, the remission made by the creditor of the share which affects one of the solidary debtors does not release the latter from his responsibility towards the co-debtors. in case the debt had been totally paid by any one of them before the remission was effected. So, uh, in relation to Article 1215, for example, so, for example, A and B are liable in solidum to C in the amount of 1,000 pesos. C remitted A's share, meaning C said that uh, A, uh, hindi ka na liable for your share. So again, magkano yung amount? 1,000 pesos. So meaning to say, yung share ni A sa 1,000 is 500, di ba? So sabi ni C, uh, hindi ka na liable for 500 pesos. Subsequent payment by B of 1,000 to C will not entitle him to reimbursement from A since the remission extinguished the obligation with respect to a share. However, B can demand the return of 500 from C under the principle of solutio in debiti. Oh, for example, di ba, yung 1,000 pesos, sabi ni C kay A, yung share mo sa 1,000 pesos, extinguished na yon. hindi ko na yon i-collect. Si B na lang yung kukolektahan ko. Pero ang nangyari, after ng condonation or remission, si B nagbayad siya ng entire 1,000 kay C. So, ano yung remedy ngayon ni B? B cannot go to A kasi condone na yung kanyang liability. What B should do is to go against C and demand the return of the 500 pesos. At ang ground mo in demanding the return is the principle of solution in debity or payment by mistake. 
However, if the payment made by B was made before the remission, A is still liable to B because the remission is without effect. The obligation having been extinguished already by the payment. So, ang nangyari is, di ba si A and B may utang sila na 1,000 kay C. Solidary yung kanilang liability. Ngayon, si B, binayaran niya yung entire 1,000 kay C. Pagkatapos niyang bayaran yung 1,000 kay C, sinabihan ni CCA na, Hoy A, ikondon ko na yung share mo na 500 pesos. Hindi na ako magko-collect from you. Question. Ano ngayon yung right ni B? B can go against A. Bakit? Kasi before na condone yung utang ni A, nabayaran niya, niya na yung entire obligation. And therefore, it was B who has extinguished the obligation by paying the amount of 1,000 pesos. So therefore, B can go against A to collect the share of A in the obligation. Kasi nga, yung remission or condonation was made after uh, after the payment of the 1,000 pesos. Article 1220, the remission of the whole obligation obtained by one of the solidary debtors does not entitle him to reimbursement from his co-debtors. The reason for the above article is that, or the reason for this article is that the debtor who obtains remission pays nothing to the creditor. Remission is essentially gratuitous. It is really a donation. So observe that the article applies only when the whole obligation is remitted. So, to whom payment should be made in an active solidarity? Diba, we said that in active solidarity, there are two or more solidary creditors. So, kanino ka ngayon magbabayad kung there are two or more solidary creditors? Under Article 1214, the debtor may pay any one of the solidary creditors. So, kahit sino sa kanila, pwede kay A, pwede kay B, or pwede kay C, magbayad si B. But if any demand, judicial or extrajudicial, has been made by one of them, payment should be made to him. So, di ba, generally sabi natin na pwede si B magbayad siya to any one of the solidary creditors. Meaning to say, pwede niyang bayaran si A for the 9,000 or pwede niyang bayaran si B for the 9,000. Depende sa kanya. Pero, may pero yan. If, for example, si B siya yung nag-collect, siya yung naningil kay D. Hindi pwede na si D magbayad kay A kasi ang naningil is si B. So, he should pay to D because D made the demand, judicial or extra judicial. So, what are the effects of payment by a solidary debtor? Let us say, for example, there are several debtors. And their obligation is solidary. So what if one of the solidary debtor paid the entire obligation? So ano yung mga rights niya under the law? So let us read Article 1217. Payment made by one of the solidary debtors extinguishes the obligation. If two or more solidary debtors offer to pay, the creditor may choose which offer to accept. So, he who made the payment may claim for him his co-debtors only the share which corresponds to each, with the interest for the payment already made. If the payment is made before the debt is due, no interest for the intervening period may be demanded. When one of the solidary debtors cannot, because of his insolvency, reimburse his share to the debtor paying the obligation, such share shall be borne by all his co-debtors in proportion to the debt of each. So, let me give you an illustration. A, B, and C are jointly and severally liable to D and E. So here, you can see that uh, this, uh, uh, this problem involves 
both active solidarity and passive solidarity because there are two or more creditors and two or more debtors. So, mixed siya, mixed solidarity. So, again, A, B, and C are jointly and severally liable to B and E in the amount of 3,000 due on January 5. If both A and B offer to pay B on January 5, the latter may choose which offer to accept. So, Pwedeng piliin ni D si A, pwede din si B. Depende, no? But ang kailangan niya lang i-collect is 3,000 lang. Kasi yan lang naman yung obligation, di ba? So if A pays the entire amount of 3,000 on January 5, then the entire obligation is extinguished. Bayad na siya. So dahil si A ngayon ang nagbayad ng entire 3,000, ano ngayon ang kanyang right? So the payment of A gives him the right to demand Reimbursement from B and C, 1,000 each with interest from the date of payment. So, so dahil si A yung nagbayad sa lahat ng obligation, may right siya na maningil kay B and C sa share nila sa obligation. Pero kapag binayaran niya yung obligation before January 5, then A is not entitled to reimbursement nor to the interest for any payment. Hintayin niya muna na mag-January 5 bago siya mag-ask for reimbursement. What if, for example, pag-ask niya ng reimbursement kay C, hindi na pala makakabayad si C kasi insolvent na siya. So ano ngayon ang mangyayari? Both A and B shall bear his insolvency in proportion to their share. So paghahatian ngayon ni A and B yung share ni C. So ang mangyayari, 1,500 each si A at saka si B sa obligation. So, di ba yung, yung payment was made to D? And take note, dalawa sila dito yung creditor. So, dahil binayaran, yung entire amount is binayad kay D, ang obligasyon ngayon ni D is to remit or to give the share of E in the credit, which is 1,500 pesos. So what is the effect of payment after obligation has prescribed or become illegal? Article 1218 states that payment by a solidary debtor shall not entitle him to reimbursement from his co-debtors if such payment is made after the obligation has prescribed or become illegal. Diba sabi natin kanina, the general rule is, kapag ang isang solidary debtor, siya yung nagbayad ng entire obligation, meron siyang right to demand the reimbursement of what he has paid. Diba? But, there are two exceptions to the rule. Meaning to say, the solidary debtor who paid the entire obligation cannot demand reimbursement from his co-debtors. And what are those exceptions? Number one is when the obligation has already prescribed or we call it prescription. The second one is if the obligation has become illegal. So for example, for prescription of actions, let us say solidary debtors A, B, and C borrowed 9,000 from B. And let us say, for example, the obligation is for the period of is a contract uh, is uh, by virtue of a written contract, meaning mayroong kasulatan. Under the law, yung prescriptive period ng written contract is up to ten years. So let us say, for example, naglaps na yung ten year period. So ano ang effect kapag pag naglaps na yung prescriptive period? Sabi ng batas, wala ka ng right to collect. But, notwithstanding the prescription of the obligation, let us say, for example, A paid the entire obligation to B. So, ang question ngayon, can A go to B and C for reimbursement? Pwede ba siyang pumunta kay B and C for reimbursement? Kasi binayaran niya yung entire 9,000. The answer is no. Because, the obligation has become 
um, or the obligation has prescribed. Meaning, di ba sabi natin kapag beyond the prescriptive period na siya, wala nang right to collect, supposedly. Pero dahil binayaran ni A yung entire 9,000, so, natanggap pa rin yun ni B. Pero si A, hindi siya pwedeng pumunta kay B and C para i-exercise yung kanyang right to demand for reimbursement. Kasi nga, prescribed na ang obligation. Wala na dapat silang obligation, kaya lang binayaran niya. What about when the obligation becomes illegal? So let us say, for example, the solidarity debtors bound themselves to deliver 10 carabaos to the solidary creditors for slaughter purposes. Later, however, the lawmaking body passed law which prohibits slaughter of carabaos. So, we need to say, the obligation to deliver has become illegal kasi may batas na nagpo-prohibit na na mag-slaughter ng carabao. But what if, for example, si A, ah, let us say si C na lang, si C, diniliver niya talaga yung 10 carabaos to E. Tapos tinanggap naman ni E. Can C go to A and B para mangulekta ng bayad sa kanila as reimbursement? Pwede bang puntahan niya si A at B para hingan sila ng mga karabaw din? Ano ang sagot? If C nevertheless deliver the carabaws knowing that the slaughter of carabaws is already prohibited by law, he cannot get any reimbursement from A and B because the payment was made after the obligation had become illegal. So, supposedly, hindi na dapat siya mag-deliver kasi illegal na yung obligation. Pero still, nag-deliver pa rin siya. So kasalanan niya na yun kasi bakit niya din-deliver? Alam niya naman na illegal na ang pag-slaughter ng carabaos. Rules in case the thing has been lost or prestation has become impossible. Article 12.21 if the thing has been lost or if the prestation has become impossible, without the fault of the solidary debtors, the obligation shall be extinguished. If there was fault on the part of any one of them, all shall be responsible to the creditor for the price and the payment of damages and interest, without prejudice to their action against the guilty or negligent debtor. If through a fortuitous event, the thing is lost or the performance has become impossible after one of the solidary debtors has incurred in delay through the judicial or extrajudicial demand upon him by the creditor, the provisions of the preceding paragraph shall apply. So let us illustrate. A, B, and C promised solidarily to deliver to D a particular truck valued at 15,000 pesos. So solidary debtors A, B, and C Tapos isa lang yung creditor. Yung object ng kanilang obligation is yung truck. Yung value ng truck is 15,000 pesos. What if, for example, the truck was lost without the fault and before delay? So ano mayayari? Sabi ng Article 1221, the obligation is extinguished. So kapag extinguished na yung obligation, A, B, and C will no longer be obliged to deliver that particular truck. But what if, for example, the loss was due to the fault of one of the solidary debtor? Let's say A. Kasalanan ni A. Ano ang sabi ng Article 1221? All the solidary debtors are liable for the price of the truck and damages. Why? Because the debt of one is a debt of all. However, that is subject to an action against the guilty solidary debtor. So, let us say, for example, si A yung nakawala sa truck. So, silang lahat liable, si A, B, and C ang magbabayad kay B. Pero, later, si B at C, pwede nilang kasuhan si A for the price of the truck and damages. Kasi nga, si A yung may kasalanan. 
what if the loss is without the fault of either of the solidary debtor but after delay? Kahit na wala silang fault, the same rule as if applies as if the loss is with fault. Meaning to say, A, B, and C shall be liable to D for the price of the truck and damages. Subject, of course, to an action against the guilty solidary debtor. Now, let's go to our final topic for joint and solidary obligation. Defenses available to a solidary debtor. Under Article 1222, a solidary debtor may, in actions filed by the creditor, avail himself of all defenses which are derived from the nature of the obligation and of those which are personal to him or pertain to his own share. With respect to those which personally belong to the others, he may avail himself thereof only as regards that part of the debt for which the latter is responsible. So, defenses derived. So, let us illustrate. First, defenses derived from the nature of the obligation. For example, A and B are solidarily liable to C in the amount of 4,000 pesos. The entire debt of A and B was paid by a third person, let's say B. In an action by C against A, the latter can raise the defense of payment by virtue of which the obligation was extinguished. Kasi binayaran ng third person yung utang, then A can raise the defense na bayad na yung utang. So, C, you can no longer collect from A. So, if the defense is derived from the nature of the obligation, then that defense is a complete defense. Other examples of Defenses derived from the nature of the obligation are fraud, prescription, remission, illegality or absence of consideration, rest judicata, and non-performance of a suspensive condition. What if the defense is personal to or which pertain to share of debt or sued? For example, A and B are solidarily liable to C in the amount of 4000 in an action by C against B, B was insane at the time the obligation was contracted. B can put up the defense of insanity with respect to the entire obligation. This defense, however, is personal only to B. And it is a complete defense. So, kapag personal lang siya, yung defense is personal lang only to the... To the to one debtor, then siya lang yung makaka-raise ng defense. So, si A cannot use the insanity of B as a defense in order to evade payment of A's liability. So, other examples of complete personal defense are incapacity, mistake, violence, minority, etc. Assume now that the portion of the obligation affecting B is subject to a suspensive condition, which has not yet happened. In this case, the non-fulfillment of the condition is a partial defense as it can set up by B only with respect to his share. Defense is personal to other solidary debtors. So in the same example, I have given you, A and B are solidary liable to C in the amount of 4,000. B was insane at the time the obligation was contracted. Since the defense is personal only to B, then that defense of insanity is not available to A as to release him from his liability for share the obligation. In other words, in other words, A may avail himself thereof only as regards that part of the debt for which B is liable. Hence, having only a partial defense, A is still liable for 2,000 his share in the obligation. So that concludes our discussion for joint and solidary obligation. So let's see each other again for the next kind of obligation. Goodbye.